You know, when you need to clear your head after a long week at work, wherever it might be, this is the perfect vehicle to do it in. It's really like a sports car. It's fun to drive. It's reasonably lightweight. It handles terrifically. And it's a lot of fun. And look, it's got good acceleration. Woo! Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Let me tell you what's happening here. You know, uh, we got pretty short notice about this coronavirus thing, so we wanted to shoot as many cars on the road, moving with cameras on them as we could, which meant we couldn't do some of the uh, indoor walk-around stuff. You may have seen one video with the Maserati where that happened, and we have one more. We're working around it, and we're trying to get it all back together again, and it will be very soon. Uh, the car we're shooting today is the Vanderhall Edison II. It's an electric car designed by Vanderhall out of Utah. It's a fascinating company. They make these three-wheelers. And when they first brought it to me, I thought it'd be the price of a Morgan, like forty-five dollars or $50,000. But they're actually in the mid twenty-five dollars to $30,000 range, which I thought was very reasonable what it was. And now they have an electric version. Uh, and since we were not able to get into the technical aspects of it because I just wanted to drive it because we just had to move very quickly. I thought I'd show you a really old electric engine. This is a Nikolai Tesla alternating current motor. Now, Edison and Tesla were rivals. Um, Edison was vastly more successful. I think it's fair to say Tesla was really a genius, uh, but not a very good businessman. In fact, a Tesla at one point was selling his alternating current idea to George Westinghouse, and he had a deal to get a dollar for every kilowatt of energy it produced. And then Westinghouse called up and said, listen, I can't do that deal. It's going to break me. Can we just forget that? And Tesla said, yeah, OK, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Well, Tesla would have been a billionaire today if he'd held George Westinghouse to that deal. Now, alternating current and direct current are different. Edison liked direct current. Edison believed that every house would one day have its own power station and make its own power. Direct current flows in one direction, alternating current flows back and forth. With direct current, if you were to grab direct current, you would get electrocuted because you wouldn't be able to let go. It would hold you there. Alternating current, you could grab, and then it would, could throw you off. That was sort of the difference. Plus, alternating current can travel great distances where direct current can't. I'm not an electrician. I don't understand the ins and outs of that. But I love the beauty of this simple motor. Well, it's not simple. It's actually quite complicated. But it's beautifully made. It's from the late 1800s. Uh, I think the patent is 1900 on it, but it's obviously developed before that. It's made by Emerson. And uh, well, here, let me, let me turn it on for you and show you how smoothly it runs. <laughs> Now these are all the original windings. Uh, it's just a beautifully put together thing. I, I love this stuff from the industrial age. You know, it's so incredibly well made, and obviously there's no plastic or anything in it. It's all beautiful metal, and it's. I've had this for 30 years, 40 years. I've really done nothing to it other than just run it every now and then. It seems almost bulletproof, but it's uh, even got the original brushes on it. So for it's 122 years old, something like that. So this is just the dawn of electricity. And I just found it to be a fascinating kit thing. And well, the truth is, I wanted to add a little time to the video. I felt bad that this video is only about 10 minutes long. So I thought I'd show you an electric motor to kind of, you know, just juice it up a little bit. If you like Lavender Hall and you'd like this, it's electric, it's the same thing. You know something? Let's go for a ride in the car. All right, this is the very definition of an adult toy. Not that kind of adult toy. I mean, a fun kind of drive around adult toy. There's no door, there's no roof. It's only got three wheels. This is called the Vanderhall Edison II. It's electric, it's got two electric motors, one for each wheel up front, and you have a third wheel on the back. 
uh, puts out about 140 horsepower. They make a gasoline version of this car, too. You know, when electric vehicles first came on the market, they were extremely boring, dull, and slow. And then as people got used to it, they realized, hey, let's put some pizzazz into it, you know, as my dad would say. You know, let's make it more fun. Let's make it more exciting. And this is the culmination of that, that effort, you know? It's really like a sports car. It's fun to drive. It's reasonably lightweight. It handles terrifically. you think having three wheels would make it somewhat unstable, but not at all. I mean, it drives and runs like a real sports car. And it's a lot of fun. And look, it's got good acceleration. Woo! This one, I think, is maybe more fun because it's, it's guilt-free. You know, being electric, you're not polluting, you're not using fossil fuels. It's just about as fast as the gas car. You charge it up at home, and it's fun. You go for ice cream, you run some errands. You know, when you need to clear your head after a long week at work, or whatever it might be, this is the perfect vehicle to do it in. Especially if you live in California. You get out like this, engine makes no noise at all. All you hear is the rubber tires going around. You can hear the birds chirping and all that kind of stuff. You know, I like vehicles that are extreme, either really noisy or really quiet. And this is really quiet, you know? Uh, as much as I like the sound of a big V8, sometimes on a day like this, when you're going through a canyon and there's no other traffic, you hear the birds, you can hear the sound of the wind, you know, it's kind of fun. It's got a range of around yeah, 150, 200 miles, maybe a little bit less if you put your foot in it all the time, as I like to do. A vehicle like this is a whole different kind of animal, you know. This is an electric version of what was originally a gas car. It's a three-wheeler. It's an open car. It's basically pretty much like a motorcycle. But the electric customer is a little bit different. The electric customer wants something that's guilt-free, you know, where you can drive it without polluting, without using fossil fuels. And this is a pretty good example of that. You know, they're a lot of fun to drive. They have just about equal power to the gas car. Not, not quite the range, but something like this, you go out and you zip around the hills, you have some fun. You can go 150, maybe 200 miles on it. And people who say electric cars pollute more really don't know what they're talking about. To build an electric car uses more pollution than to build a gas car. But once they're on the road, the pollution stops, okay? Something like this, you're just using electricity. Just the fact that you could run this indoors without doing harm to anybody is a pretty good example. If you ran a gas car in a closed garage, you'd be, you'd be dead in a couple of hours. This, it's like running a hairdryer or an iron or something like that. Uh, all, the, all the pollution is in the manufacturing, and then from that point on, it doesn't pollute at all, or hardly at all, you know. When you buy a toy like this, you have to justify it to the spouse, you know. And you've got to come up with good reasons. A, it doesn't pollute. Uh, it's made in America. It's made in Utah. It's all built by American workers. They export them. It brings money into the country. You're helping the economy. <laughs> Any excuse you can come up with to get something like this, you got to use. This is the kind of car you take out to go look at the Christmas lights or do anything like that. Just take a little ride to the beach, go to the park. Uh, you, you know, it's, it's a whole different customer. And in markets like Europe where gas cars are being banned, especially in, in urban areas and in the cities, it's the perfect choice. But it's just something that you can go out and enjoy yourself. It's sort of guilt-free motoring, you know, being electric. You're not using any fossil fuel, so nobody can get mad at you, you know? When you pull into the vegan restaurant, oh, oh hey, they're, they're gonna be applauding you all the way, you know? And kids love this thing. You get to be the coolest dad. Huh? Dropping your kid off at of school in this. Ah, oh, you're the coolest dad in the neighborhood. You know, a lot of cities in Europe now are banning the automobile, so electric vehicles get a free pass. And when you think of electric vehicles like a Prius or something, you think of practical or whatever, whereas this, it's really just about having fun and having a good time. And uh, let's play. This would be an extreme toy. You know, if you can't afford the Lamborghini or the Ferrari, this is a fun alternative that uh, you can have a lot of laughs with. See that? Whoa! 
It's a lot of fun until the cops see you. But at least they won't hear you coming. That's the good thing about it. And going through these twisties, it actually handles pretty good. Look at this. Yeah. You know, I've said this a million times. A kid born today will probably very rarely drive in a gasoline car because this electric thing is moving so quickly now. Almost every manufacturer has an electric version of their car. And those are interim models, you know, until they finally go all electric. Probably by the year 2050, almost all automobiles will be electric. And I say, enjoy it until they take the fun away. I mean, it handles pretty good. It's got regens, and when you go downhill, it puts more electricity back in the battery. See, as I go down this hill, I probably pick up a mile or two. It's a bit, imagine a gasoline car going downhill, you're putting maybe another pint or two of gasoline in the tank. And that's basically what you're doing with regen. It makes its electricity. I love the fact that it's American made. That's, I find that really a, a, a good selling point. Is it practical? Not really. There's no roof, there's no doors. You can't lock it. And I gotta admit, it's a lot of fun, you know? Any excuse, honey, I'm gonna run to the store. You know, it's one of those vehicles you just wanna go out and drive around. The fun thing about three-wheel vehicles is they're technically not a car, so they're not subject to all the same rules and regulations that automobiles have. So you can be a little bit more open, you know? It's a fun vehicle that's pretty guilt-free. And look, when you put your foot in it, it goes all right, too. Look at that. Hey, see you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>